Welcome back. We missed you. We're here at the GSTL. Right now, it is one and one. And we're going to see if Sculp take out Squirtle. Sculp, kind of a lesser known player. Squirtle, a famous Pokemon, turned into a StarCraft 2 clothing. Yeah. He's uh, used to be part of the Squirtle squad. Fought many times for Ash Ketchum. Yeah, but did here defeat he is, man. Team Rocket. Ash thought that uh, he would just fight Fire Source. That might days. be. No. He's fighting Skull. Let's see if he is a rock type or a grass type, Tasteless. We're going to find out our toasts because the game is now loading. So let's get ready for some more awesome StarCraft 2 action here at Terran versus Protoss. Our Terran player from a primarily Protoss uh, center team. So this guy should be pretty good against so many of the likes of a Protoss like Squirtle. In the bottom right, our Terran player, one of the... Oh. And this is up, Sculper. Sculper. That is a Korean accent in that. <laughs> and in the bottom left, our player who's already defeated one of the opposing team's players. Starting, Squirtle. There he is. Look at him now. Uh, I don't see Squirtle losing this, but maybe I'm wrong. Well, I've I'm, been wrong just, like once in my entire life, and I accepted that, but yeah. Uh, it turned out at the end of the day you actually were right that time. Right. So uh, I was just wrong about being wrong. <laughs> I could die happy. Oh, we're so flattered. You're like sad in that picture for some reason. I'm just like in the picture. Not You're just like there. He's like, I'm gonna draw. Or you take have two friend. things to say, but <laughs> I have none. Well, all right. I I want to see how Sculp has evolved. The first time we saw him, yeah, it was bad. Uh, it was. There was nothing special about it. It was just kind of bad. But you know that might have been a lot of nerves, stuff like that. People are nervous, man. It's a nerve-wracking thing, as I'm sure you recall from your early days. Yeah, player. I was a guy that actually did get a lot of anxiety before yeah. a match. It'd be like I was actually just like watching myself. Yeah. Like my, my actions in the match were almost superstitious. Like I just like, wasn't actually thinking. Yeah. Like, wow, I beat this guy all the time in practice. And then, you know, but, you know, eventually the only way to get over that is to uh, just get experience. Mm -hmm. Well, this is Sculpt's second time out. Can he show us what he's really made of? Not too much pressure on him. They're one and one. Yeah. You know, that's a decent time to put someone like him out. It's like, well, Sculpt, go out there. Do what you practice. We'll see how it goes. Now, it, he's obviously going for that quick command, but a second gas going up that we just saw over at Squirtle's base. So, is Squirtle going to do some sort of technical rush here? Definitely a possibility. It's a map where Void Ray builds are pretty good. Yeah, they they uh, they certainly are tasteless. You can do a lot of things with them. I would. I'm just. I'm actually. Overall, just excited to see what Squirrel does. He's shown us a lot of really cool styles. He's one of the you know, groundbreaking Protosses that will come out and be like, hey, this is what is happening in Korea. Watch this. And he'll do it. So we might see something new. How many barracks will Sculpt make before a gas? He may even go up to four here. I think he'll go three, but I'd love to see four. I think four would be uh, an awesome, awesome choice against someone a lot more seasoned than him. In this yeah. That SCV got shot in the back. And it will just be three tasteless. The gases are going up. And he's getting his first gas at his expansion. That's a little interesting. Well, on some versions of this map, it is a high yield gas. And in fact, this one has it as a high yield gas. So yep. there you go. I didn't know that until you just said that, actually. I was being all like, yep, but I actually didn't know. That's all right. Whoa. A little bit of harassment there with the soccer. Didn't lose any hit points, so it's totally fine. And making a Nexus out in the big natural that has more mineral patches and thus is actually a better base, but harder to defend, of course. But, you know, with the Terran expanding like he is, uh, he's not going to have the ability to attack that mm -hmm. uh, as easily. Well, if he went four barracks, like we were talking about earlier, and just pumped out a bunch of Marines, 
Then, as a Protoss, you actually have to make uh, three gates of units and just kind of make a lot of units, or that can walk right over you. In this case, he's actually being really greedy, going right for robotics without knowing that there aren't four barracks there. So, Squirrel just a little bit risky, I feel. Excellent cinematography here. Pew! I got pew pew lasers. <laughs> pew! Oh. oh, wow. Gotta be careful. All right, this is uh, now. <laughs> Go ahead. He turns around because he realizes, hey, you know what? If this guy actually played a completely safe game, these Marines will get completely slaughtered by three gate units, uh, which of course Squirrel didn't quite have. I mean, he had enough to hold it because it was only three barracks. Yeah, but uh, it's a fun little thing to look at there. He could have done maybe a little bit more damage. Now, we do have some tech labs going up. The Observer popping out When we here. see a build like this, what do you think? What, what if you went right into Colossus after the Observer? Because they're going to have their starports uh, out later. Well, you know, if you see a lot of Marines, sometimes that is a very smart thing to do. And yes, you're, you're quite right. The Any Vikings are going to come out quite late, and I would not at all be surprised if that's what Squirtle ends up doing, is going straight into Colossus. I would be a little bit more surprised if he switches over to Twilight Council right here. I feel like what he has to do is kind of a turtly play uh, because he has taken this far out expo and then his third base is going to be kind of easy to take. So a Colossus, I feel like he can defend very well with that from here. Server just checking it all out, taking it all in, spying. I'm a spy. I don't know why I said that. That was not funny. Really weird. <laughs> That was really weird, man. <laughs> I said it and I like, looked into my own soul and questioned, like, am I even cool? You are cool. Thank you. Okay, uh, so no Colossus. It's Forge. Oh, and he's going to go straight into uh, Twilight Council tech. Uh oh, Terran's moving out. Yeah, that's kind of interesting because if, as Stim finishes, Sculpt were to hit with these two medevacs popping out, Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying Squirrel's going to die, but it's a very wide open area he has to defend. Yeah, force fields are not as useful. Yeah, exactly. As so, they could be. You know, it's it's that's why I feel like a Colossus. You have a Colossus with that army. No, his his sculpt's army isn't going to do anything. Oh. But in this case, where he's going to be very slow to get charged, very slow to get blink, it's just going to be kind of in wide areas trying to handle. He's going to have to stay near that ramp, kind of like he's doing right now. He has the Observer there to Now, walk. here's what's really good about this. He's in the factory in there. Some of the units in the back, if the Marines and Marauders uh, flood in, will be hitting the factory during that battle. Ah, uh, he might be getting ready, Artosis. Well, he's going to lose that factory, Tasteless. There is an Observer watching this, and that is a small choke point in the open area, but that's still, that's four force fields to fully shut that. Yeah. Realistically, only needs three. You don't want to go through tiny little chokes. But, uh... Just little things to keep in mind here. But he is, he's stalling well. Here we go. It is all going to come down. Actually, that's this. a pretty good Marine Micro. Yeah, that was pretty good overall. And, but. oh, beautiful force fields. Those are pro right there, Tasteless. Trapping those Marauders for a moment. But look, he's losing a lot of units. Notice that and he he's has... going to lose these uh, Medivacs, too. Yeah. This always happens when I play Terran 2. I'm like, ah, oh, Medivacs are so slow. Starkers are so fast. Now, I want to point something out here. He lost all his sentries except for one, which now has no energy. Yep. So this is the thing about uh, teching up quickly the Twilight Council. You've taken this open expansion. That makes it very much harder. Now he's he's low on sentries, and that's a big deal. He's going to want to spend his gas on High Templars with this tech route. And... I'm, I'm actually surprised he walked out and engaged into that rather than try to have a slightly narrower, more narrow area to defend because it's never good to lose sentries, Tace. It's just No, not. it's never good. No matter how many times you try to convince me... I'm sorry. I'm going to disagree with the move that I'm we just, just saw I'm, here. I'm, I'm completely obsessed with this this thing, I believe. I know, man. You now, gotta stop. Now here's what uh, Poros could do um, since... Yeah, the medevac count's a little bit lower. He might want to try to attack when the Terran's trying to expand down here. I don't know if it'll work. I mean, he does have charge, which sort of changes yeah. a lot of stuff. Charge is pretty darn good. Yeah, no kidding. Plus one attack against plus one armor at the moment. Oh, he's baiting him in. Yeah, he's totally baiting him in. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, Tasteless. Well, we that Stalker took one for the team. Yeah, it did. Uh, we have Psy Storm on the way, plus one ground weapons on the way, and a bunch of High Templars did just morph in. So as Psy Storm finishes, the whole dynamic of this game changes. I do not see... Oh, the Ghost Academy has been started, so it's on the way, but it's going to be a little bit late. 
for how quickly these high templates are out. Uh oh. All right, now he's like, oh my god, those are charged zealots. That's a pretty good micro overall. Oh my god, he's not even being touched. Look at all the middle. Skull. Middle of the zealots were out of breath. <laughs> Size storm tasteless is done. These high templars all have enough energy for it. Uh oh. Gotta be careful trying to snipe high templar. Didn't quite work. Yeah, he needs more stalkers. Perfect. Bring more stalkers in there. His Jesus, Sculpt's zealous. micro is so good. Yeah, he did a really nice job there, microing. Uh, the Zealots all are very low in health. The third Nexus is going up for uh, Squirtle. Ooh. You know, it's funny because I, I didn't think Terran was even, or should have even engaged there, and then I, he did it. I'm like, oh. What? All right. Like, yeah. It's, he had very nice micro to go along with it. Um, uh oh, oh. Look. Those side storms. It's, those are going to change the game, Tasteless. Or they have the possibility to. Nice, nice. side storms. Very nice side storms. From Sculpt not really running from them. And a lot of damage is being done. In the meantime, there is a drop behind Squirtle's third base. Or rather, it's natural down low. It's normally the third. And Sculpt ends up. This actually a bunch of units. This is a really tough thing to recover from. Yeah, Squirtle is in a lot of trouble faces. One tenth supply to 69. And if that Nexus goes down, he is going to be crying tears of nerd blood. Uh, I don't think it's going to go down. What? Okay, yeah, I'm right. Oh, wow. That was close. Only 122 hit points left. But he might be able to just force his way in here. Guess what? There's no force field to stop him. Squirtle lost all those a long time ago, and here we go. He's definitely all gonna right, target he's it. He's definitely gonna lose that. It goes and down. Ninja vanish. I have not seen Marauder micro this good in a while. Yeah, this is very well done uh, by Sculpt. He has some ghosts on the way as well. From here, it might just turn into cleanup time, Tasteless. Well, he's just dealing too much damage, and you know, whenever you get down to just stalkers, you know it's bad for Protoss because. As good as stalkers are, if they don't have other stuff there to work with them, and they're not being uh, blinked, blunked or whatever, yeah, you, uh, yeah, it's bad news. So it looks like oh, snipers. Ghost coming out, sniping some zealots. Actually, a good use of that right now. Energy could not have been used better. He would have actually lost that battle had he not done that. And even take out another stalker before turn around going home. Right now, the supply is 81 to 68 with Sculpt in the lead. Sculpt though, he's had this third base this whole time. He's a little bit low on SCVs, though, I have to point out. He's at 48 SCVs against 51 probes. Huh. So uh, he has, he he's a deficient in at least one way, Tasis. It's a little bit lower than he really wants to be. If he had been at, you know, let's say 68 SCVs during a lot of this, he would be in, in an amazing, amazing place right now. But he kind of is, anyways. And yeah, he does not want to run from this beautiful Psy Storm. Yeah, I love nice. that. That was that so turned well that done. around real fast. Yeah, and forces the Archon Morphs, which is good. Yep. Does not want to uh, have those High Templars be around. I don't know if he could stop this uh, stream of units, though. I mean, yeah. I got to say, Skrull's doing a really bang up job of just holding this, but I, this is eventually he's going to have to buckle under the pressure. Squirtles has slightly better upgrades, but yeah, there's just too many units coming here. Look at this, Archons being morphed as opposed to any High Templars saving up storms, and this might actually be a Tasteless. Sculpt GG. playing very well. And as Hoso, showing that they are actually really good. I'm sorry, uh, Startail Coach. Sorry, Prosa. All right. Squirtle was a big confused. Sculpt, very happy with himself in his second GSL game. Yep. He's got his he first win. win. That's usually when the, you know, the confidence kicks in. And you're like, all right, hell yeah, man. Definitely. Look how many capital S's he has. A lot of capital S's in that. There are a lot. Not lowercase S's, capital S's. Well, yeah, I wouldn't talk about lowercase S's. But they're going to kiss for a minute. I was like, awesome. all right, man, whatever motivates you. All right, Startail team kind of like, ah, crap. Well, now you have a very good Terran out there. Well, he seemed very good. He, well, he definitely was that game. Let's give him that taste. But how good are his other matchups? That's a very good question. Thank you. This is a fascinating question. Um, who do you put out? Who do you put out from Startail? Well, I said July's or last time. I think I'm right this time. But maybe I'm not. Um, I can see that. There's a lot of people they can pick from. 
It's a big team. Yeah. Honestly, I don't know. I said July Zerg now. I don't know. Who do yeah, you it's, a, it's a harder choice this time. Uh, well, it's getting down to the wire. I and like I like Ace's Protoss versus Terran. I'm kind of a fan of that. Well, and here's the other factor is that, yeah, no, actually Ace is a good choice, but here's, but, here's, here's the problem uh, is there's going to be more Protoss players coming out there for them. Yeah. But they got to snipe this Terran. So it's like, who has both good, uh, who's both, who's good, excuse me, against both Terran and Protoss? I, you know, if I was the head coach, it would be July Zerg. That's what I do. But July Zerg would have already been out there for me. So yeah, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd been I would like, go with you July go. Zerg once again. Give me a smack on the butt. The map's gonna be Taldrim Altar, so could be July Zerg. This is a Zerg's Protoss. Like, Zerg's like ZVT on there. Actually, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Except for that one brief mid-game timing push, it's a pretty good map for Zerg. So yeah. we'll see in a moment here who they're going to choose. Sit Stasis. tight, guys. Just relax. Sculpt. Get out of the wind. Nerds like Charlie Horse in the backs at home. They're getting so excited. All right, who is it? Mm -hmm. Ah! There we go. Good choice, good choice. Take this nerd out. Now, this is someone that Sculpt would have watched on TV as a child winning championships in StarCraft 1. Yep, he's one of the older players. It's going to be a, a little bit harder for him to take this guy out. It's going to be... You know. And apparently that is... Pepsi drink with uh, writing on it. The winner gets to drink that. Don't they know we have three cases of that backstage? All right. Well, this guy needs little introduction. Oh, of course, it's, it's God of War. Taste. This is July Zerg. He has uh, countless championships with StarCraft One. He's almost done it in StarCraft Two. Not quite yet. Some strong finishes. Fourth at the NASL Grand Finals. Uh, yeah, he got a round of eight in GSL. Finalist GSL. Yeah. Played in the World Championship. He actually single-handedly, or pretty much single-handedly, took down. The, Non-Korean team in that. Messed up everything. Sad day. Sad day. And these guys. Yeah, he's smoking the like, Lizer. He's like, keep playing, man. Put Not more ours. muscles on him. <laughs> All right, let me do that right now. He's out of his groin. Yeah. He's got a pencil. It's a marker. It's like, am I right? You're right, man. I'm right. You're really good at this. You're good at everything. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Taldrim Except, Altar. Uh, being modest, I'm not good at that. The there map is Taldrim Altar. It's going to be our fourth set here. And um, if Sculpt can take out Jalizer, yeah, like this I, I think then the other team has it. I mean, well, his team has it. I'm like apprehensive about saying the name because I can't pronounce it. How do I say it? NS Hoso? Hoso, okay. I keep adding C and then I'm like, Hoso, so. Well, that SEO is. I'm like, Sol. NS Horseshoe. Sol. You're like, no, Nick. <laughs> And his horseshoe. And his horseshoe. I'm like, sorry, I got it mixed uh, up. That was very lucky. And that's hickory sauce. It's like, how do you do that? All right. Uh, we're waiting for July to get in the game. He's got to make sure all the settings are right on that very sexy keyboard. So there's, and I'm like, how do I get that keyboard? You actually buy two keyboards and you break off the keys. Uh, and you stick them under the keyboard. You can't do it with every keyboard, so be careful. Some nerd's gonna buy like a $300 keyboard and break up the key and be like, oh, I just broke my keyboard. Da 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 Alright. Alright, we're gonna keep zooming in on these faces until Eliza joins the game. Eventually, we're gonna find out if one of these guys needs a Viore pad or not. Viore strip. <laughs> oh. You seen the commercials for that? Yeah. She pulls off the strip. It's like, she looks like a cactus. I'm like, oh, it's a porky pie. Oh. <laughs> Tasis is vomiting. Tasis, yeah. Have you ever vomited out of your nose? N no. It's terrible. I don't know why I have it. You have to be really sick to have that happen. Well, wouldn't it just be the angling of your mouth? No, I think it has to do with the volume of things coming out of your stomach. Mmm, you might be right. There's only so much room. When did that happen? Oh, I was. Uh, so on our last break, I'm like, <laughs> what did it happen? Uh, it was a little right. over a year ago. A little over a year ago? You just it's sick? terrible. It's terrible. Don't ever let it happen to you. Well, now we know. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. I was going to try it. I was like, maybe it's fun. I don't know. I'm an experimental guy, you know? 
You know, maybe I'll go camping this weekend. Him, maybe I'll throw up out of my nose. Here we go. It's time. The golf flames have been cute. That can only mean one thing. We're going to see these guys play.